All right. So there's reports coming out from real reporters, you know, because sometimes I look at this stuff and then I look into it and it's just like some random tweet. But no, there are real reporters reporting on the fact, especially um, you're seeing more of it about the Bucks looking to bring back the nasty Antetokounmpo. And then there is also the rumblings of Bucks trying to dump off Marjan. And you know what? I want to start with the Marjan piece of this. Um, and this is a guy that it's the classic example that the buck of the Bucks cycle that these of the cycle Bucks fans have been on really since John Horse has been the GM. And when he since when he was originally the GM, I was not on YouTube talking to people, but I was definitely in comment sections, you know, scrolling through. And basically, this is how Bucks discourse has gone since he's been the GM. Um, in terms of draft picks, a guy gets drafted. Most people don't really think the pick makes a lot of sense. It's not the guy that would be like the consensus consensus to be taken. Um, but Bucks fans are all like, "You just gotta believe he's gonna be great. You cannot doubt this. He's great. You're a Bucks hater if you don't like the pick." And then you know, year one, he's a little slow, but you gotta give him time. Give him more time. Year two, not a lot of development. You gotta wait more. And then year three comes, and then Bucks fans are kind of just like, he stinks. But then the rookie we drafted this year, it, you know, in this case, it's you know AJ Johnson. Oh, what do you mean you don't like the pick? You know, and it's a cycle that it, that happens. You know, they, there's a draft pick from John Horst. You have hope early, and the Bucks fans are kind of all in, no doubts whatsoever. And then a couple years later, it doesn't work out, but yet they're still believing in every John Horst pick that happens until they fit, fail again, and you're just believing in the new pick the upcoming year. And so that's a cycle that's happened, and Bo Champ has just been a guy that, rookie year, he did show some signs. He looked like a guy that, for a rookie, he was able to hit the open three. He played hard defensively, wasn't necessarily a great defender, but he was a rookie. The problem with him is there's been no growth. You know, going into year three, could not even play well in summer league. Going into year three, if you were a first-round draft pick, you really should be dominating year one. But going into year three, if you're there, it should be the easiest thing in the world. And it's not even just that he didn't play great it, or like that he was missing shots. Like, he was working really hard just to get shots off, doing, like, extra spamming dribble moves, taking bad shots. And the time where I was just like, I don't think this guy could ever do it in the NBA was a transition take in summer league where uh, he had like some little white backup point guard on the summer league team in front of him. And he tried going behind the back and like lost the ball off his leg rather than just like dunking on him or just going up strong. And I just think this guy kind of lacks the feel for the game at this level. Um, I think he kind of, it kind of reflects the guy that didn't really play college basketball and get that hard coaching. Um, you know, there. I hope that Marjan could be something in the NBA. He's got physical tools, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen with the Bucks. Uh, I think. But Budenholzer, people kind of were mad that they didn't play. He didn't play him more, but he gave him a lot more of a shot. Looking back on it, than you know, probably a lot of coaches would have. Adrian Griffin gave him some shots, but then Doc Rivers was just like, nah, nope. Andre, you could get some shots. Uh, AJ Green, you could get some chances, but Bo Champ, I'm not playing you at all. Even in preseason, just nothing. So it seems like they're going to try and uh, move him for a second round pick. If I had to guess, and I don't know if a team would give up a second round pick for him. Uh, can you do a second round pick swap? Because like maybe a team would do that. Like, eh, we'll move down to a couple picks in the second round to take a shot on him. But honestly, I think most teams are a little bit more sure in their roster than. Um, they're sure enough in the guys on their roster than to have to cut one of them for a Bucks draft pick that hasn't worked out when, you know, I don't think, I think they'd rather use a second round pick that they have in the future for a guy that they could draft and develop rather than, you know, Bucks guys that have not panned out. So honestly, what I think is going to happen, he's probably going to end up getting waived so they can make room for either, um, We'll get into that in a second, actually. But I think he's going to end up getting waved to make room for somebody. And then now we've got the news for Thanasis Antetokounmpo coming back. And I like it. I think at this point it's not ideal for me, but I like it. The reason I do like it is because I talked about this yesterday with the reports, or not the reports, with the fact that the Bucks have Justice Winslow on the G League right now. And it was that as much as, you know, I like 
the idea of having like an eight, nine man rotation of solid veterans that you could count on. And then having the end of the bench filled with rookies and, you know, maybe one of them, not rookies, but just young players, AJ Green, Andre Jackson and the rookies, stuff like that. And then maybe one of those guys turns out to be something. But I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to have like eight guys that are veterans and they're playing consistent minutes for you. And then the rest of your roster is just young guys because you might form a little mutiny at the end of the bench with all these young guys stewing in their emotions, wanting to play. It's important to have a veteran out there to just bring the good vibes. Like, come on y'all we here. But the thing is with Thanasis Antetokounmpo, as much as I love his energy and I've loved what he's brought to the bucks. I actually genuinely do. I think he, what he's done does make an impact. I think at this point, uh, it's a little too clear that this guy is not there to play basketball on the court and help the Bucks on the court in actual games. To where there was an interview where they said um, a Bucks reporter um, was talking to the rookies Tyler Smith and AJ Johnson, and she was like, "You guys got to bring the Thana- energy Thanasis brings on the bench. You know, he's like the model citizen in terms of that." And they were just kind of like laughing, looking at each other, like this dude Thanasis. <laughs> And as unfair as it is, I think he has become a meme to where if he's at the end of the bench and trying to like be a leader for the young guys, I think that if they got to know him, they'd respect him. He seems like a great guy. But I think personally, I'd rather a veteran that I think is a true professional in like a Justice Winslow that also potentially could step onto the floor. You know, Justice Winslow is a guy that, you know, he won a national championship in college. He's a winning type of basketball player that has just had some issues in terms of injuries and fit in the NBA. But he's also a guy that, you know, I think you can put him on the court and bare bare minimum, he's not going to be just like a sore thumb sticking out liability. Uh, And he's also a guy that if you don't play him, you know, he's been out of the league for a second to where he's not going to be, you know, stewing like some other players were like mad if they don't play him. I think he'd be a good uh, role model for the young guys, you know, embracing a role, even if it's not playing consistent minutes, but also knowing that, okay, this dude really can play at an NBA level. And if we need, if there's an injury and they need to throw him on the floor, he can do that. So I'd rather a guy that could play in actual games, but also still be uh, a role model off the end of the bench, you know, make that role clear to uh, Justice Winslow. Hopefully, when they pull him up and say, We need you to guide these young guys and be a leader on the bench, bringing great energy and just making sure everything is steady with the young guys. So, personally, I love Thanasis, but just because of the limited amount of roster spots, I'd honestly prefer a guy like Thanasis, um, like Justice Winslow, to with Thanasis at the end of the bench. But I'm not freaking out about it. I think the Bucks team is deep enough to where. If you have to use a roster spot for Thanasis, I can understand the perks of it. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like, and subscribe. Please, yes, I am.